So next Monday and uh, May 23rd from uh, 1 to 3 o'clock. Uh, we have a spring yard sale coming up. And um, I'm kind of excited about it. You know why? Because I have two boxes in my garage that just say yard sale on it. <laughs> that means they're coming here and someone's going to be um, happy to get whatever's in there, I'm thinking. So, um, and that will be on June 3rd, Friday, June 3rd, and uh, Saturday, June 4th. And so, uh, the times, I think it is 9 to 1? Uh, Saturday. Friday is 9 to 5. 9 to 5. Saturday is 9 to 1. 9 to 1. Okay. I have to get this right. By the time June 3rd comes around here, <laughs> I think I'll have it nailed down. So. Setting up Thursday the day before. Setting up Thursday the day before. I will be there at 10. Anybody wants to come earlier? Come and help. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, the men's breakfast will be happening as it always did first Tuesday uh, of the month, and that's going to be uh, at Big Al's. It'll be June 7th, and that'll be at 9 o'clock. And so they do have uh, uh, breakfast specials uh, for those that are interested in breakfast specials. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, bring a friend, bring a neighbor, you know, uh, encourage someone you know to come. Uh, it's just a good time to get away and, you know, do some chatting as men, right? Men chat. <laughs> All right. Bottles and can fundraiser. Uh, as I indicated, it's one dime at a time towards our goal of renewing our, our roadway sign. So that's where we're at. And now it's our time to rejuvenate. We come to church to worship our Lord, to rejuvenate ourselves, to rejuvenate our hearts, our minds, and our soul. And each morning, what's exciting is each morning we wake up with a brand new blank can can canvas for the day. Think about that. Every single morning we wake up with a brand new blank canvas. And God is giving us many opportunities, many opportunities to share our love with those around us. So let us all rise now, and we'll sing our opening hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
compassion for all. Oh God, today we have brought the names of those who are near and dear to us, including those who are on our prayer list, including all the Ukrainian people who have been impacted by this evil war in their land. We lift up our prayers for those who are experiencing loneliness, who are experiencing sadness, and those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and especially those who need your healing hand. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. At this time, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with all those who are viewing our service here in our sanctuary and those that are at home. Bring us to you, Lord. Look deep into our hearts. Cleanse our spirits. Cleanse our thoughts. And transform our lives. As we lift up our prayers to you now in silence. Oh Lord, help us to be the people of your resurrection, who have been freed from the bonds of death. We place our lives in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to do a unison reading this morning from Psalm 148. Um, the monitors may be a little busy and difficult to read, but you can open up your hymnal to page 731 and you will be able to see Psalm 148. And you can read along with me. Give me a moment here. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters of all the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at His command they were created. And he has established the forever and ever. He has issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding, you mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel, that the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. The book of Proverbs 22.9 teaches us the gracious will themselves be blessed, 
for they share their food with the poor. This morning we all had an opportunity to share a portion of our possessions to help with the mission and maintenance needs of Christ's church. And let us rise as Christ's disciples and sing together for our Lord the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings received. Let us pray. Holy God, you have given us so much through your love and abundance. Our cup overflows. From the bounty of your blessings, we offer these gifts back to you. Use these offerings for your glory as we work to grow your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're able to stand and rise, you can do so now. As we look to worship our Lord and Savior, as we look to worship God, as we ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us, with loud voices, we ask for the Lord's Holy Spirit to flow through us this time, to be our helper, to fill our hearts with compassion, to fill our hearts with kindness. Say it with me. Fill our thoughts with love, Lord. Fill our hearts with love, Lord. Fill our hearts with love, Lord, so that we may, so that we may love, love as you love us. As you love us. Let us all sing together now our second hymn, God is so good.
so good He's so good to me Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, I tell you now, where I am going you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Love. Love. In our scripture today, Jesus provides us with two thoughts to consider. Two thoughts to consider. If we live our lives each day with these two thoughts at the top of our mind and allow them to guide us, to guide our paths, our lives would be absolutely extraordinary. Extraordinary in every single way. Our happiness, our blessings, our abundance, our well-being. The first thought is about bringing glory to God. And Jesus said these words, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in Him. Jesus is revealing to His disciples that the hour has come, that the hour has come, that the Son of Man will be glorified. From our human perspective and our human thoughts, the death of Christ on a cross is a shocking revelation. It involves the unthinkable suffering it involves unimaginable humiliation because Jesus so loved his Father in heaven. His earthly life was all about bringing glory to his Father, God. It was about doing God's will on earth. He did good deeds with unconditional love. Unconditional love. Nothing was attached to his deeds. It's all about God's love. One of many people's favorite scripture is this one, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loves us. God loves us. God loves us. His love is so strong for us. His love is eternal. Think about that. His love is eternal, because God is eternal. 
Jesus brings glory to his Father by dying for lost sinners. It's love. By taking our place for the punishment of sin, for all the sins that we have committed, to raise from the dead, to ascend to heaven, by doing these things, the Son of God glorifies the Father, and the Father glorifies the Son, Jesus. Just as we are to bring glory to the Trinity of God every single day, bringing glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Jesus also provides us with another thought here in the scripture today. And it's a thought that we should have. It's a thought we should have. It's a thought that should resonate in our minds, in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our souls. Every single day, it should resonate with us. And that thought is to love. Plain and simple, to love. The Apostle Paul once said this about love. If I have faith, if I have faith that can move mountains, but if I do not have love, I am nothing. Nothing. Paul also wrote about love. He wrote about love. That love is the fulfilling of the law. The fulfilling of the law. So what does Paul mean when he said those words? That love is the fulfilling of the law. During Old Testament times, Jewish followers, their only path to heaven was by following all of God's commandments. And for a Jewish person, there was the Ten Commandments, plus there was another hundred or so. And many people considered them to be very, very difficult to follow, very difficult to do, very difficult to apply to in their life. Especially in a world that was filled with so much temptation. Christ said that there is an easier way. Christ said there's an easier way of keeping God's commandments without even thinking about it. Think about that. Without even thinking about it. And I'm sure there are many people who hear this. They may be saying to themselves, how can this be? How can this be? Jesus said, if you love, you will unconditionally fulfill the whole law. If you love, you will unconsciously fulfill the whole law. If we take any of the Ten Commandments and apply love, think about it, apply love to the Ten Commandments. There shall be for you no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. If someone truly loves God, embraces God with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul, because of their love for God, they will not place anything before God. You would not place anything before God. They would not allow anything to become more important than God in their life. They're especially their relationship with God. How about this one? You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. 
to use God in vain. You would never say the Lord's name in vain if you love the Lord, if you truly love the Lord. How about this one? The Lord commands us to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. If we have a strong love for God, that we do, we would be more than pleased to dedicate one day, one day in seven to worship and to grow in God's word, to embrace God's wisdom, to get closer to the Lord, to be transformed by God's love, one day. We are built for love. God built us to love. We are to love others. If we truly love mankind, no one would be told they would have to love and respect their father or their mother. If they have love, God's love in them. If we love God, it would be unthinkable for us to, to kill or murder anyone if we apply love. If we truly love God our, and our fellow man, how could we steal from those we love? How could we ever commit adultery against the love of our lives? If we really love God, who has ordained marriage with his holy seal, if our love is so strong for our spouses and are so strong for God, how can we ever be drawn away to lust after another? Apply love. Beginning of the scripture, it says, and he went away. It was Judas had left the upper room. Judas left the upper room. He left because he allowed money to be his God. He allowed money to be his God. He loved money more than he loved the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, he called them children. He called them children. Just as God considers each of us to be his children. Jesus told them that I will be with you only for a little while longer. You will look for me. And he said to them, just as I told the Jews, I'm telling you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. At this very point, at this very moment, Jesus says these words, I give you a new command. I give you a new command. Love one another as I have loved you. We must love one another. As Christ's disciples, we are to love one another. We are to love God. We are to love our neighbors. We are to love everyone just as God loves us. If we love our neighbors, how could we give false tense testimony against them? If we love them, it would be the last thing that we do. If we apply love. If we truly love our neighbors, we would never dream of coveting our neighbor's home. We're coveting our neighbor's wife. We're coveting our neighbor's worldly possessions. Because of our love that we value, we value our relationships with our neighbors more. God is love. God is eternal. Love is eternal. 
If our daily thoughts are based on love, our love will help us to fulfill the law. Love fulfills all rules. Love fulfills God's commands, both the Old and the Old Testament, and the New. There was a man by the name of Henry Drummond. Anybody ever heard of him? Okay. Bear with me. He was a Scottish evangelist. Scottish evangelist. He was a biologist as well, and he was a writer. And he's best known for his little book on love called The Greatest Thing in the World. His words on love can speak volumes to our hearts. He once said, instead of allowing yourselves to be so unhappy, just let your love grow, grow. Because God wants it to grow. He said that it's important for us to seek goodness in others. To love more. To love people more. To love them more personally. To love them unselfishly without expecting to get anything in return. Jesus said it best. If we just love, we will unconsciously fulfill all of God's commands and expectations. If we love one another. As Jesus said, everyone would know that we are his disciples if we just love. Let us not pass up today or tomorrow, or the next day. The many opportunities that come our way, our way, come across our path to love and to bring glory to God. To love abundantly is to live abundantly. To love forever is to live forever. Love one another with all your heart. Amen. 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 Well, I feel renewed. <laughs> I do. It's always good to worship God on Sunday morning, and I'm so blessed that you're here worshiping with me. And uh, I'm excited. And the Lord's Holy Spirit going to help us to love others. And we've given God thanks for the many blessings that the Lord has placed in our doorsteps. We have sung hymns with enthusiasm for our Lord this day. And today we've learned many things. That if we love others, it's life changing. Because God loves us. If we let it happen. We will lead a life full of abundance, of love, with a renewed commitment to doing God's will, bringing glory to God every day. So let us rise and sing together our closing hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a joy divine Leaning on the everlasting arms What a blessedness What a peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms
sweet to walk in this pilgrim way Leaning on the everlasting arms Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day Leaning on the everlasting arms I feel like leaving today. <laughs> Let us leave this place, knowing that our worship of God is just only the beginning. Let us know. Let us go and love others as God first loved us. May the love of Christ be with us now and forevermore as we depart in peace together this day. Amen. Amen. Spring.